Naperville Airport. Automated weather observation, one, zero, three, seven, Zulu. Wind, calm, visibility, niner. Sky condition, clear, below one, two thousand. Temperature, one, five, Celsius. Dew point, one, five, Celsius. Altimeter, three, zero, one, five. Go on direct KCCO. IFR, proceed to file. In the comments, I always put Angel Flight. If I am flying in Angel Flight. And then I file. Filing flight plan, leaving in six minutes. That's pretty close. Cool. Flight plan is filed. Come on, baby. Come on. There she goes. Got the brakes, they're working. Alright, so before we get in the air, I don't forget if you guys want, you can follow me on Instagram at Tommy Flies A Lot post way more often there than I do on YouTube. It's just much easier. You guys are wondering why I'm dressed like this. Um, they say dress for the job you want right now. Um, this company Flight, I'll put a link to them in the description. They reached out to me actually on Instagram. New left, clear right. And they asked if I was interested in trying out their flight uniform shirts. Um, so I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I'm like, I'm not a, I'm not a professional pilot yet. I'm a commercial pilot, but not professionally. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll try it out. So they sent me one of these to try out, and um, this is my first time actually getting to fly with it. So I got like six hours of flying today, so toward the end of the video, I'll be able to tell you more about how I enjoy it. But so far, it's stretchy. It fits really nice. Let me make another call here. Somerville traffic, Mooney 811 on the ramp, taxi 24, Somerville. Um, yeah, fits good, comfortable. Seems to be breathable, so you shout out to Plate. I'll put a link to them in the description. Thank you guys. I even got my wings here. You can see um, those are actually from Angel Flight. So Angel Flight, I've got my badge and my uh, wings up here. So I kind of feel like I'm dressing up, <laughs> like uh, wearing a costume. Um, but at the same time, it's good to look professional when you do Angel Flights. I think makes the passenger feel a little more comfortable and I always I would always dress up anyways wear a polo and, and nice pants and stuff but hey if you got a pilot shirt why not wear it okay, all right come to the stop make sure for best power here we go Ooh. nice and easy up to 1700 let her stabilize everything's in the green fuel falls where I expect it watching EGTs and RPM here came up RPM went down come back Bunch of EGTs again, EGTs all come up, RPM down, back to build, a little more juice for the prop, prop's working, I saw the manifold pressure, RPM and all pressure dip, come back down to idle, alright, prop, cop last power boost, electronic fuel pump, we'll bring it out when we go out there, we can have like landing lights, part of my final flow, seatbelts are on, door, window, retraction lever, I already checked it, door's good, window can come closed, toggle button pushed, alright, who's flying? I'm the only one in the cockpit today, but it'll be a left seat departure. If there was someone here that was a pilot, or even not, I would tell them, don't touch the controls, I'm flying. I expect the engine to die and take off. When it dies, I'm going to say, there it is. Push forward, find a place to land, no turns back. Below 1,000 feet. Aboard to take off. So, uh, just me in the plane today. About full fuel, but we'll still rotate before the 1,000 foot markers. Um, anything goes wrong on the runway. Before that, we'll just come to a stop. we got plenty of runway. Anything goes wrong in the air. Uh, the usual runway goes away pretty quick. There is some grass off the end. Other than that, there's no good options off of runway 24 at this airport. So we're going into the trees. We'll fly to the crash site. Uh, stay out of the stall horn. And then departure plan. What are we doing today? Let's figure it out here. Taking off 24. We'll be right turn out directly over my mom's house. And then over to Atlanta. Any questions? No? All right. All right. That's it, guys. Let's get going. Final check of everything. I like the way everything's looking. All my frequencies are set. I'll bring the fuel pump on, landing light on, mixture comes in, flaps are good. Final check here. It's doing what I expect it to do. Get rolling. Summerville traffic, Mooney 700811. Uh, thinking off runway 24, I'll be departing to the west. I don't know. All right, 24 is confirmed. Always check these, man. All right, expecting that engine to die. Let's roll it on. All right, feels like what I'm expecting. Let's let off the brakes. Here we go. Two, four. All right, there's full power on the right rudder. There's the RPM. 
Everything's in the green, nothing's flashing at me. 75. Ease back, let her come up real easy. Tap the brakes, there's my positive rate. Gear's coming up. Up and locked. Oh my god, you guys. What a smooth takeoff. Maybe the smoothest I remember. Alright. It's good. Flaps coming up. A little bit of forward trim to compensate for that. There's 700. Work the park. Come on, little traffic. 811. Departing up the upwind. Runway 24. Westbound. Solid though. Alright, direct 2. ACCO. Nav. IAS mode. Autopilot. Perfect. I'm liking everything right now. Forward at departure. Go pump land light, cow flaps are open. Make sure you're set for now. You go ahead and contact departure. Up and approach, good morning, Mooney, 7 9 or 8 one, one. Call Charleston. Yeah, Charleston, it's a Mooney 8 one, one. Uh, We are four miles west of Somerville, uh, IFR to Charlie Charlie Oscar. November 7 9 or 8 one, one. maintain VFR and squawk 1646. 1646, maintain VFR, 811. November 811's radar contact, 5 miles west, Somerville, indicating 2,700, cleared to Charlie, Charlie, Oscar, via direct, climb and maintain 8,000. Alright, clear Charlie, Charlie, Oscar, via direct, climb and maintain 8,000, booty 79 or 811. November 811, Charleston, Altimeter, 3018. 3018, 811. <clears throat> Alright, we're officially IFR, cleared up to 8,000. That's it. <laughs> Pretty easy flying early in the morning like this. Um, nice and smooth. No complaints. Okay guys, so uh, topic of this video, I wanted to... I've had a bunch of things happen at small airports traffic wise. Interesting things. But there have been a couple of things that stand out. Um, including one major incident that I caught on film. Before I get to that, the other day I was flying, I had my kids in the airplane with me, and um, we were coming back to Somerville Airport in the traffic. I was landing on runway 24, and it's a, it's a left-hand traffic pattern for 24, 1,000 feet to go. Everything's looking good. So it's left-hand traffic, runway 24, got a guy coming straight in from the east, 10-mile final, and I'm coming from the, the, the uh, west. Um, and there's other traffic in the pattern as well, so Somerville's a busy airport, a lot of students, things like that. So anyway. I come in, I maneuver into the left downwind, and we're talking the whole time. And I beat him into the traffic pattern. Of course, straight ins do not have the right of way. Uh, it's just like you can make straight in if it makes the most sense, if it's the safest thing. I know there's people have have views on this about you're not allowed to do it, but um, a straight in approach into an airport is a valid approach um, if it's the safest way. Sometimes it's the easiest way to get into the traffic pattern if you're talking to people and you can see the airport and um, that's the least disruptive way to get into the pattern. That, that's, that's sometimes the case. Um, and it, I, I turned, turned base, I didn't have him in sight, but he said he had me in sight. The trusted him, I turned final, and I landed. And I'm on the runway, I have not called clear yet. I'm rolling down the runway. I go to roll off the runway and I look out my left window, because I'm uh, exit left, and that airplane is on the runway behind me, rolling, quick. And I had my kids in the airplane, like I said, and so I just immediately got extremely frustrated. I roll off the runway and I keep the mic on my guard. Some real traffic, Mooney 811 is now clear runway 24. I, I don't know if they said anything, but I was frustrated, so I keep back up. I said, I wasn't off the runway, guys. And they said, you were rolling off. I said, I never called clear. I was on the runway. And then I realized, don't argue over the radio, stop. But they stopped, I stopped. I don't even know who did it, to be honest with you. I never, never met the guy. If anything happened on the runway... 811, contact Jacksonville Center, 132.902. Have a nice day. 3292 at 182. Jack Center, good morning. Mooney, 798 8000. 798 Yeah, just just really frustrating. I mean, if, if, if anything had happened on the runway and I had to come to a stop, or my engine died, anything like that, and there's two planes on the runway, you can slam into the back of me. I have no idea he's back there. Um, if he had to do a go-around for some reason, had to had to throttle up, would he have had the, the runway ahead of him available without hitting me? I don't know. There's a million reasons why you do not land on the freaking runway when someone's on it. 
I would have 100 percent went around. So should they have. So that incident brought to mind another incident that I saw at the very same airport years and years ago. I was flying paramotors out of this airport. I had climbed up with flying around. I was on my way back, and I had the engine off, and I was gliding in. All right, so I'm at 3,200 feet right now. I flew to 4,000 feet, and it started getting hazy and cold. And I don't know. I didn't feel like climbing any higher, so I killed the motor, and we are just gliding back to the airport. As I'm gliding in, I realize I'm, I'm you know I'm watching the airport. It's a beautiful day, and I see an airport taxi out. And I'm like, okay, he's going runway too far. And I see another airplane taxi into six. Like one of them was a, uh, a Beechcraft Baron. It was a twin. A twin with a big nose on the front of it. The other guy was flying a biplane. And it's dark colored in the video. You can see it's kind of hard to see. So this is strange. There is, well, I guess the wind is crossed, so it doesn't matter. We got one plane departing off runway six. One plane going to depart off runway two four. And the one off runway 24 looks like a biplane. That's pretty thick. I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm gliding. I don't have a radio on me, by the way. And I see one airplane taxi out on the runway 24. And I'm looking and I see the other airplane taxi out on the runway 6. And I said, oh, holy shit. And then they start rolling. Oh my god, dude. There's two planes on the runway at the exact same time taking off toward each other. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. Holy fuck. Oh. Holy shit. Of course, I have no depth perception this way, so I don't know how close they were, but I can only assume they missed by, I don't know, feet, inches, I don't know, but they, they crossed in midair. That was fucking insane. What the fuck? Dude, that was so close. Holy sh Um, of course that that, that Baron pitches up so high on takeoff with that big nose, you can't see underneath you. So you've got a, a view ahead of you. And as far as the biplane, I don't know what happened, but it was the closest thing uh, to a disaster I've ever seen, and it was insane to watch in real time. That was f***ing insane. Two planes, one off runway 6, one off runway 24, took off at the exact same time facing each other, and they missed by f***ing nothing. I thought this was going to be a boring video, I wasn't even going to post it. God, I hope it showed and it's probably, I was probably too far away. Damn it. Wow. That was nuts. Oh, my, after I landed, I was freaking out talking to my buddy and the uh, the Baron came back and I talked to the guy I said, that was insane, huh? And he said, what was insane? I said, you... And anyway, long story short, he didn't, he never saw the buy point. He never saw that. I was like, dude, you almost died. And, you know, it, you know, it, it's just insane. So I've, I've since met this guy, um, he's actually a very, very accomplished pilot, um, and, you know, he's, he's a really cool guy, and I've not talked to the biplane guy, but I know he's still based on the field. So, I look back on this, and I try to think what they could have done better to avoid that, and really, on that day, I just don't know what they could have done. No rules were broken that day, technically, that's the problem. So, you don't need to have a radio at an untowered airport. It's not a requirement, which it sounds insane. It really does. Uh, but you don't need to. So nobody technically broke any rules for that, that day. I'm guessing the Baron was making radio calls. Uh, and again, the uh, the biplane doesn't have to make radio calls. I've, I've learned from talking to people at the airport that the person in the biplane has since installed the radio, which is a great idea. But, yeah, it, I mean... And it, if there is a ball to this story, it is get a, a radio to, I mean, to fly out, out, out of a small airport. But um, you just need to be aware of that when operating out of small airports. 
just because you have ADSB, just because you're making radio calls, you um, that doesn't guarantee that you that you know where all the traffic is at. So eyes out the window, be looking for people in biplane. Also, this biplane is brown. So really hard to see. It's not a white airplane. It, it blends in with with the horizon. It blends in with the ground. Very very air, hard airplane to see and a slow flyer. So that can happen at uh, these small untowered airports, and you, and you need to be ready for it. So. I'm always very vigilant of that. I don't trust an ADSB. Number one, it can fail. Number two, um, like I said, they don't. They might not have ADSB. And don't trust that everybody in the in the pattern is making radio calls. Even if they're making radio calls, we've seen incidents in these past years where people make radio calls and still fly into each other. There was an incident in California recently where two airplanes were making. Uh, calls all the way to the airport. One was in the pattern, one was straight in, in again, just like this time uh, the other day with my, my kids in the airplane. The airplane making straight in, I think it was a twin airplane turn base to final, and they hit right base to final, and everybody died. Uh, I forget what crash that was, happened maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago in California. Both airplanes are making radio calls, but neither of them talked to each other. They weren't coordinating with one another, and there's a lot of a lot of opinions out there on how to talk on the radio in, in these small and towered airports. I'm a proponent of not over talking, but but making calls and making sure that the other people in the pattern hear you, see you, are coordinating with you. Just having an airplane call their their you know crosswind and downwind and base legs is not enough, especially as a student pilot because they're already overloaded with things to do in the cockpit. They're already they've already got a lot going on. Yeah, these small airports are kind of the wild west. They um, Anything goes. They don't. You know, you got big jets operating out of out of the same airport as biplanes that don't that don't use radios, um, and that's the reality. So you need to you need to be really aware of that. So just be careful out there. I mean, I've seen I've seen a bunch of other things. I've seen other airplanes cut people off in the pattern. I've been cut off on the runway um, before. I had, had to go around. Um, I've had people cut me off in the pattern. And I've only been flying for you know what three years. Just in that time, I've seen all this happen. And, uh, you know, it, it happens pretty frequently. Well, that's all I had for you guys today. But if you guys like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram if you like all that jazz. Um, honestly, the best thing you can do to support the channel is share the content. If you guys like the content, you think other people would enjoy it, uh, please share. All YouTube channels like mine, they don't they don't make a lot of money. We just do. I do this because I enjoy it. Uh, make the content. And the money that I make from the channel uh, pretty much goes right back into the channel. It goes to subscriptions for editing software and uh, music licenses and things like that. So it all gets formal back in, and then the rest of it goes directly into the gas tank of this airplane. So my goal isn't to make a lot of money on YouTube. It would be cool if I did, but uh, that's not the goal. The goal is to make aviation content that I enjoy and hopefully other people enjoy. So. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks, guys, for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. This final two three zero son of two hundred. You want to do three eight one nine two one two thousand? Hey Jim, you got your helmet on. Hey Jim. Can you hear me? Yeah, what's up, man? Hey, I didn't know. Sound like it shut off. Yeah, what's going on? Dude, did you see what the what the hell just happened? Oh, what? Uh, two planes? Would they almost collide? Yeah. Uh, they, they, no, they, I didn't see that. They took off, one off runway 24, one off runway 6, at the exact same time, and they missed by, like, nothing. Oh, shit. Dude, that was, I thought I was about to witness the craziest thing ever. Oh, man. I'm gonna come in for a landing, we'll, we'll talk when I get down. Yeah, there's not that much wind down here, but let me move my stuff if you're coming in. No, you're good. I'm gonna come in, uh, right on the side of you. No, leading edge, goddammit. That was crazy.